Okay, so now that we've found all the ways of identifying a user, which is pretty dramatic, we'll now find all the ways to obfuscate where you're coming from, which is also fun. So we're also going to show ways of pr protecting what your browser exposures and also some caveats as well. Basically, the caveats are this is a moving target. Don't try this at home. I'll like it stuff. Uh, we'll talk about simple obfuscation first, which is going down to the coffee shop. Uh, we'll then talk about cloud providers, VPN providers, anonymizers, web browser privacy modes, which basically the privacy mode, the takeaway is don't use web browser privacy modes to rely on it for a strong, uh, strong security. It's only at best weak security. Um, and we'll also talk about anonymized email as well. Um, so, borrowing a neighbor's Wi-Fi connection is basically easy to do. Um, it should be free and plentiful depending on how urban of a neighborhood you're actually in. If, uh, and the other thing is, of course, is that you need not be next door. If with an appropriate antenna, you can cure with a standard Wi-Fi connection, which would actually be FCC legal. Um, with the appropriate antenna, you can actually uh, get connections up to 189 miles away um, or 260 miles with uh, the with antenna wafted up in the air, which is pretty darn impressive. Um, uh, and yeah, there's actually people that are dedicated to doing long-range long Wi-Fi type stuff. Uh, but uh, it is the important, the other thing here is, is, is to remember that it's generally not legal for you to break uh, Wi-Fi that has any sort of encryption, including web on it, even though web is easily broken. It is generally not legal to break. Um, it is generally not legal for you to use uh, a neighbor's network connection for illicit purposes where we use as a exercise to the user for, it's, however, it's for incident, incidental personal use, it is legal. So it's just one of those things where it, it, you just have to be aware of the caveats associated with that. Um, re reminder, I'm not a lawyer, so just don't start mm -hmm. borrowing your neighbor's internet connection without anyone asking. Um, so without an antenna, here are some uh, networks I see at my house, um, and there's a ton of them. Uh, that's because I live in a condo complex, and so there just happens to be a lot of neighbors that have uh, Wi-Fi service available to me. Um, and for the ones that are uh, not secured, you can possibly borrow and use. Um, a simple Wi-Fi antenna increases your range from uh, from your house to about uh, a little bit over half a mile. And it's reasonably straightforward to build that antenna. Uh, it's called the Pringles antenna because it's using Pringles. Um, uh, Amazon has multiple antennas instead of the Pringles antenna, which you can buy commercially. They usually have some sort of preamp or post amp. I'm not really sure how all the antenna technology are that does exist, and I don't know the appropriate things. Um, uh, here is an antenna used at DEF CON. It's basically just a satellite antenna and a Wi-Fi uh, uh, and a Wi-Fi antenna at, at the end. So you're getting all the magnifying effects of that uh, particular connection. They were able to sustain the way that they do it is they were able to sustain pings for an hour, which is was a requirement for the contest that they were. Participating in at a long range, so it's, it's pretty impressive. And as I recall, they were actually limited by the um, by the mountains surrounding uh, Las Vegas more than anything else. That's why they were only able to get the 55 mile range. So the caveat here is just because you can borrow someone's wireless access point. 
delimiting you should because laws change and I do not want to see you go to jail. And I, pr furthermore, I do not want to be responsible for you going to jail and then you're saying, hey, I did because of me. <laughs> that's not the case. Um, uh, but you know, of course, that said, about a third of your neighbors actually admit to borrowing one of your neighbor's network connections, at least. And looks like a 2003 report, I guess. It's like a lot of Wi-Fi has been locked down in the last few years. Yeah. It, more people are walking them down than opening them, them up. But yeah, for a long time that was really prevalent. Um, I'll, I'll see if I can find an updated version of that. But yeah, it's, it's still a big enough number to realize that people were doing this. 